Thank you everyone for joining the session. Uh, kindly give us a moment to just let others join in uh, before our vice chair introduces our speakers. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. My name is Helen Namisi, and I am the vice chair of the LSK Nairobi branch. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar this afternoon, which is on essential soft skills for lawyers. This is part of our welfare webinar series where we look into welfare matters for advocates practicing in Nairobi and Kiambu counties. As some of you may be aware, our mandate includes welfare and practice matters for the advocates in those two counties. And therefore this is in line with that mandate and part of a series. Throughout the year, we have hosted several webinars um, under this um, welfare webinar series, and there'll be several more uh, in the coming months. And therefore, we invite you to look out for those. But for those, for today, I wish to extend our warmest greetings from our chair, Eric. Um, unfortunately, the vice chair has, it seems to be having some technical issues, uh, but as she said, uh, received the highest regards from our chair, Mr. Eric Thori, uh, and we will begin shortly, right before uh, we'll have a brief introduction of our very well-known speakers. <laughs> and <laughs> kindly just give me a moment to receive the same.
Okay, um, I'll just have to take this up. Um, kindly, maybe just uh, begin the presentations and we'll take a break in the middle of the session to give our speakers the due introduction that they deserve. Uh, so Mr. Arthur Igaria, kindly do begin the presentation. Uh, thank you very much and um, welcome uh, colleagues to our presentation this afternoon. I am honored to present uh, this afternoon's uh, session with my colleague and brother, Mr. John Chigiti. And um, we have done a lot of things together with John, uh, who you can see on the screen. Uh, but the one uh, interesting thing that John and I share in common is that we, we both went to the same high school uh, and we believe that uh, that high school is, is what shaped us to be uh, the, the, the practitioners that we are today to, to a very great extent. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, I, I would like to, 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 to tell you that uh, John is, um, is, is a very accomplished lawyer. Uh, with uh, 22 years experience uh, as a lawyer. Uh, John is also a member or a, a, an accredited uh, counsel at the International uh, Criminal Court, which sits at The Hague uh, and the African Court. He is also a director at the Legal Resources Foundation and he's a certified uh, professional mediator. He used to be a lecturer at the Kenya School of Law uh, where he lectured between the years of 2014 and 2019, and he's a mentor at the Strasbourg University. What, is, what John is well known for, however, is um, his passion for um, an underprivileged member, members of our society who are known as the intersex. And in that regard, John has written a book called, uh, entitled Intersex Persons and the Law uh, in Kenya. And uh, John has carried this passion to the level where he's written a book and it has uh, a claim in that regard and um, congratulations John for reaching out and, uh, and, and publicizing the, the plight of these underprivileged members of our society. So I will uh, request John to kick us off with the presentation and then at some point I will come in uh, in the middle of the presentation and um, conclude it after which then we will have a brief uh, question and ses answer session. Uh, so over to you, John, and um, you can start off the presentation. Thank you very much, my senior, Mr. Igeria. And uh, like you heard, we went to the same school and he uh, respected me because he did not call me a rabble today. Arthur Igeria is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, a senior partner at Igeria Ngugi, Igeria and Ngugi Advocates, the fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, accredited mediator, a certified public secretary, governance auditor. That's a very brief bio. He has a lot, a lot more than he's telling you. He has mentored me severally in several ways. Mr. Igeria is a lovely gentleman who you have to look for all the time if you want to grow in this profession. A very kind heart, a very generous gentleman. And he, Helen, I and a few other colleagues play in a band where we try to play music for us in Nairobi. And Mr. Igeria, out of his generosity, offered his office where we do our practice every Monday. So he's not just a generous professional in the space that we are in as a lawyer. He has other spaces where you learn a lot, a lot, a lot 
from his power. And he did not tell you that we are council at the ICC. And whenever we travel there, we are always privileged because we end up cost sharing and we end up doing a lot of things together out there. And I'm extending this as a way of telling you that indeed friendships are real. Thank you, Mr. Igeria. So I am again honored to be the one who is going to open the conversation of the day. We all know that we learn a lot at the university. We learn a lot at the law school. Though it is a fast lane, a short runway, we still learn a lot from the law school. What we have come to realize is that being a lawyer does not make you a good lawyer if you do not have certain soft skills. These skills, unfortunately, are not taught to the lawyers at these institutions that I have mentioned earlier. So what happens, we come into the bar, become advocates and start practicing in our diverse ways as convincing lawyers, criminal lawyers, constitutional lawyers, name it, the list is long. But we are not taught how to relate, how to talk, how to communicate, how to coexist with each other. Many a times we go to court, lose very good cases because of these soft skills. Many a times we find ourselves at loggerheads as colleagues because of lack of these soft skills that we are going to interact with today. No doubt we appreciate. As advocates, we are called, we have a duty to uphold all the conversations around access to justice and the rule of law. This does not only flow from the constitutional obligations in Article 3, Article 20. We have the duty to promote access to justice, Article 48. And under the Advocates Act, we expand that obligation by becoming members of that bar. We find ourselves in a space where we have conversation around Article 35, access to information. Beyond that, we have an Act of Parliament, access to information. For who and why must we have all these provisions that I have mentioned they're important because those are the tools, the mechanisms, the hard structures that must be harnessed in order to promote the rule of law. But those structures on their own, those obligations, statutory and constitutional obligations will not be realized if we do not have the soft skills. That forms the conversation of the day. What are these soft skills that we are discussing today? They extend in the direction of the court going advocate, and they also expand to the non court going advocate. So, what are these soft skills? Personal attributes that will enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. That is what I'm asking, I, I'm thinking. Was that for me? Sorry. So these are, thank you. These are attributes that we carry and they're personal. So you have to identify them, you have to work with them, you have to apply them, but you are not taught how to. 
though they are soft, they have a lot of authority for us as professionals. So there are personal attributes that enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. So when we look at it from the dimension of other lawyers, we must ask ourselves, what are these personal attributes that will enable me to interact with my colleagues? And not only just interact, but interact effectively. Their, char their character traits and interpersonal skills that characterize a person's relationship with other people. <clears throat> so indeed, as we can see, they exist with a reason, with a purpose. Why are they important? They make it easy to form relationships with people. It's through the soft skills that we say that we are enabled and we are able to create trusts and dependability. Remember, you're not alone in the profession. You're dealing with clients, you're dealing with colleagues, you're dealing with courts, interrelationships. The soft skills will enable us to improve employee performance and productivity. So that if you are in the place of employment, these soft skills are useful because they help you improve productivity and good and uh, your performance. They enhance personal confidence. So what does that tell you? It simply tells you that you have to identify those traits, you have to identify those entries that make the soft skills yourself. And it's through interrogating self, through soul searching, that you will be able to know them so that they help you improve your confidence. And remember, without confidence, you're going to think as an, as an advocate. They, they improve employee retention. So at your workplace, not only are they important for the employer, the employer is also going to crisscross and pass and go and exchange with you their traits, uh, their characteristics, as you do the same with them. So it becomes a two-way journey. So you find yourself in a space of employment for longer because you become a better person, more productive, with good performance, a dependable person at your place of work. And you're there because you're a team player. You have a good soft skills as uh, we are again going to uh, discuss. Next slide, Kendrick. So the soft skills in relation to the court growing council connect to humility. Empathy when talking, taking clients instructions that must reflect, listen out, weigh, assess, feel, work with your client. When you're taking instructions, don't go ahead of your client. Be patient, exercise humility. Understand your client. You'll only be able to understand your client if you pay attention. If you speak less, they speak more. So that you're able to understand and walk into their life, into their space, so as to understand them better. You must learn how to exercise courtesy. When dealing with your colleagues, courtesy really, really pays. Courtesy is a ticket that is going to give you a lot of connection. When it comes to team playing, when it comes to interacting with colleagues who would otherwise treat you differently, courtesy will help you nurture, develop, improve, your relationship with your colleague. Nobody is going to teach you at the university how to be courteous. It's upon you to identify your mechanism, your structure, your groove and the approach that will help you grow and grow as a courteous counsel. It matters not what your age is, matters not what your gender is. All that counts 
that you're a courteous counsel when it comes to relating with and interacting with fellow colleagues at the bar. You must always respect the court. How do you address the court? With humility. You must be respectful, respect the judges, respect the magistrates. Don't rub them the wrong way unnecessarily. But that does not mean you must not be confident. Be courageous, but let it end with respect when you're in that courtroom. Patience, how patient are you? Dear court going lawyer, today I've seen the cause list was not up until lunchtime in Milliman. Did you exercise patience? Were you posting all the wrong things to the web pages of the court, to the social media platform? Because you didn't have patience. Were you insulting the magistrates? Were you insulting the judges? Patience is key. Next slide. The senior candidate, give me the next slide. And as uh, my senior pushes the next slide, you will realize that he is the one who is running my slides, yet he's my senior. Sorry, How that one? Not the one? Up. Uh, up to bit one more. That one. Let's deal with that. It's on the floor. Yes. Um, Either way, we'll go to the CC. One is C, the other one is C, so we'll deal with them either way. So the confidence, uh, sorry, before I go to confidence, I was telling you to look at the example of humility. Who is running my slides? Who is sweeping my floor? It's my senior, Mr. Igeria. He's not complaining. He's doing it out of humility. A humble soul. How humble are you? Symbolically, we are learning that even from this presentation. Another extended soft skill, confidence. Nobody at the law school taught you how to do it. Nobody at the university taught you how to do it. You have to interrogate yourself. Understand yourself. Work on your confidence level. But it doesn't just come like instant coffee. You must know how to speak boldly, calmly, clearly, with authority at the same time. How do you speak? How do you present your case? How do you interact with your colleagues? Are you clear with a manner that you're able to manifest confidence? Address the recipient of this confidence, of this communication, the soft skill through using the appropriate titles, Mr., Miss, Mrs., Prof., Professor, Ladyship, Lordship. Don't go wrong on that one. It might water down the confidence. Dress appropriately and dress well. Be neat. Don't down your tools because you're on the soft platform. We know those lawyers who we have been seeing dressed in vests because they're doing the soft court. Do not. It's going to become a habit. You'll forget how to dress. You'll forget how to remain neat. Put on fitting clothes. Dress fully. Don't dress up to the waist. You know what I'm talking about. Prepare. Prepare. And prepare. You cannot be confident if you're not prepared. You cannot be confident if you didn't prepare your brief well. You cannot be confident when you're cross-examining your witnesses if you don't know the case well. Have a full command, not just a partial command of the facts of your case. Know all the good facts, know all the bad facts. Know the law around your facts and do not hide the bad facts. Take and remain in control. Take charge 
Do not leave the client to guide you. Be confident to the level that you are taking control of your case, of your documents, of your witnesses, of your case globally. That will manifest and show the level of confidence in the council when you stand up to present or argue a case. And the confidence will not only be seen by the court, the confidence is seen by your colleague. The confidence is seen by your client. The members of public, remember the court is a public place. They will see the confident. That soft skill will help promote the authority in the, in the lawyer and in the law, and even by extension, in the courtroom. Next slide, kindly. Be creative. You're always told to think on your feet. Many a times you'll find yourself in a situation where you're a team leader, be creative. Many a times you'll find yourself in court where the judge is through you into the deep end. Be creative, get a solution, don't drown, don't leave it to the court. That is since we have spent that argument, I leave it to the court, let us not do it. Get a solution. The solutions are always around you. But remember, like we have said in the previous slide, if you have not prepared, you will not know how to maneuver. You will not know how to create a solution to the problem. And we know that cases are stories. If you don't have a good story, if you don't have a mechanism of creating a solution to the problem, you will very easily lose a very good case, a case that had very good pieces of evidence, a case that had very many nice witnesses, wonderful, credible witnesses, will get lost if you don't know how to weave your theory in a way that will create a solution to the problem. Think outside the box. Do not just get stuck in a small space. The solution many a times is usually not very far away. It's usually very near you, but you have to be creative. You have to think outside the box. Flexibility, don't be fixed. You're not a piece of furniture. You have to know how to solve the problems using very many other possibilities, other avenues, other options. You could even know how to solve the problem using your opponent's evidence. Persistence, persevere, instead, hang in there, push your agenda. You'll only push your agenda if you we have another presentation somewhere. No, he's muted. Thank you. Perfect your negotiation skills. Remember, you might have a very good theory, but you might not win if you don't know how to negotiate, if you're not perfect in your approach. Many a times you'll find it's a question of negotiations. It's a question of persuasion. It's a question of making the, your story look, look uh, to make your story look more credible, more believable. And this also extends and expands into negotiations. When you're doing ADR or when you're doing negotiations with a colleague towards a closure of a settlement. Mm -hmm. Fellow Kenyans, fellow colleagues, these soft conversations are in you. You have them. You have to identify them, nurture them, hone, improve, make them better. And we believe that Nairobi Law Society has organized this so as to help you harness, learn, navigate into the spaces through the soft skills so that you can make the bar a better place. And as I, as I hand over to my senior, Remember, you're privileged because you have a lot of problem-solving mechanisms 
in technology. Thank you very much. Over to you, Senior. Thank you very much, John. So I'll take over from uh, where John has left off. And um, move to the next slide. Uh, now, one of the things I'd like to say what, is that we are discussing soft skills generally. So you might find that um, even though I have titled, we have titled them as, as soft skills that uh, court going lawyers should have and those that are not really to the court going lawyer, they match. So the fact that it's entitled non court going lawyer does not mean that they are not they are inapplicable to a lawyer who goes to court. So I just want to introduce this as a, as a kind of a disclaimer so that you don't think that the presentation is, is centered specifically to one class of lawyers as opposed to another. But one of the other soft skills that we believe are critical to a lawyer is availability. And availability is critical because when we are dealing with uh, clients and other people we interact with on a daily basis, they expect to have our attention and they expect us to be there when they, they call upon us. And one of the key elements of availability is time management. And in time management, uh, two things uh, arise. So that one, if you have an appointment, whether it's with a colleague, a client, uh, in court, uh, or anywhere else, uh, the expectation is that you, you will be there on time. And professionalism requires that you pay attention to keeping time, to be there on time. And the lawyers who go to court know full well what the consequences of lateness are. But it doesn't mean that just because you're not going to court, you, you should not uh, pay attention to, to keeping time. So ensure that you, you are attentive to your obligation to keeping time because time is precious. In addition to that, um, if, for those who uh, are not going to court and they're meeting with clients and you're running meetings, and especially in this day and age where we have lots of meetings that are being done online, it's important to, to, to keep your eye on the clock uh, so that you don't run um, a meeting uh, for a whole day when in fact it should have been done in a few hours. And then you find yourself um, rushing through the, the various aspects of the meeting because you have not managed the time very well. So one of the soft skills that you should have as a lawyer is time management. And to help you manage your time in your interactions, whether in meetings or in whatever you do, it's a good idea, and I found it fairly helpful in several instances, to have um, something akin to a timetable or an agenda. So that when you're going to a meeting, you know the points that you're going to discuss, and you have a fairly rough idea of how much time each point is going to take so that you don't end up taking too long in, in, a, in a meeting that should not um, take that much time. The other aspect of availability is ensuring that you give attention uh, to various details. And um, this is an, uh, an aspect which many people who are non-lawyers, who are dealing with lawyers expect of us uh, so that um, if you're going through a document, make sure that um, you, you, uh, you, you give attention to the details uh, regarding the, the names of the parties. In this day and age where we do a lot of copy pasting of documents, we, are, we sometimes copy paste names um, that, that are not applicable to the documents that we are, we are dealing with and, and other details that, that are inapplicable. And if you don't pay attention to these sorts of details, your client might conclude that your mind is not there, that you're not giving their brief the attention it deserves. And, and that will put you in very bad light where your client is concerned. So give attention to those details. And one of the other things that I have found helpful um, in this day and age where we use computers a lot is to use the technologies that come with the computers with regards to spell checking. And this day, in, in, in this day and age, you'll find a lot of these spell checking tools even allow you to correct grammatical errors. And that way you're able to present a document that 
meet the expectations of you as a lawyer, because people out there expect lawyers to have very high standards. Then the third um, element of availability is dependability. Uh, and, and in this day and age where, uh, the, especially those who do not go to court and who are doing conveyancing, uh, uh, there is uh, the whole issue of uh, giving of undertakings. And you will find uh, sometimes conversations people have where uh, somebody will ask whether they can afford to rely on someone's undertaking. You know, can I accept Mr. John Chigiti's undertaking? And sometimes the response is that that is an undertaking you can accept even if it's given verbally. Therefore, people expect that when you say something, you will do exactly what you say. If you commit yourself uh, to, to a course of action, uh, please make sure that uh, you attend to it because that is the expectation and that's a soft skill that you may not have been taught in, um, in, in a formal classroom, but that is a soft skill that will carry you and build your reputation and hold you in high uh, ensure that your colleagues and those who deal with you hold you in high regard. So it's not difficult to, to um, be dependable and to keep your word and to ensure that your word is your bond. It is not difficult because all it requires you to do is to be confident that if you are committing yourself to doing something, it is something that you can do. If it is um, something that you are incapable of doing, by all means, be honest and do not make promises that uh, you cannot keep. So in, in, in essence, as a lawyer, the expectation is that your word should be uh, your bond. Then uh, moving on, there is the element of communication. Uh, I know that um, court going lawyers are required to be excellent in their verbal communication. Uh, and, and, and that is really what enables them maintain um, the attention of the judicial officers when they are presenting their cases in court. And there's a lot that can be said about uh, verbal communication. But in this regard here, I want to concentrate a little bit more on, um, on the nonverbal communication. Uh, and now, one of the elements of communication is writing skills. There are many times when people expect that uh, just because you're, you're writing um, uh, a document, that it should have um, a, some sort of legalese to, to demonstrate that indeed this document is uh, authored by a lawyer, and it is therefore a document that should be taken seriously. So, uh, for instance, you will find that uh, there are some lawyers who write letters and they throw in a lot of legalese and they're writing to, the, to someone who may not understand all that legalese. What then happens in that regard is that um, you then lose the communication that you're making and the, the recipient of your communication simply will not understand what you're saying. So perfecting your write, written, writing skills or your written skills is not just about ensuring that you've written well, there are no spelling mistakes, uh, there are no grammatical errors and that uh, your document is properly paginated and paragraphed. But it's also the ability to be understood. So as far as I'm concerned, the simpler you put it, the better. Uh, it doesn't add any value to throw in many big words that will end up confusing the person who you are communicating to. Keep it simple. Uh, but at the same time, ensure that uh, you communicate exactly what it is that you want to say. Flowing from that is listening. Listening skills are an essential part of communication. And I say this because unless you, you listen and hear exactly what it is the person is telling you, then you will not be able to respond and give advice. Uh, and, and we as lawyers, many times spend, we spend long hours listening to clients, taking instructions, um, sometimes in writing, uh, sometimes um, at meetings. And you might find that um, uh, uh, the, a client is going on and on and on about uh, um, uh, details and facts that you might consider to be irrelevant. But it's important to hone your listening skills 
so that you're able to extract the, the, the salient facts of whatever it is that is being communicated to you. And one of the, the, the critical skills in uh, listening is rephrasing exactly what it is that you've been told so that the person who's communicating to you um, is sure that they under you have understood exactly what uh, they are telling you. And that way, then the conversation flows smoothly. And if you're in a conversation with a client, they are confident that whatever it is they've told you has been properly understood. Because you are the vessel, you as a lawyer are the vessel through which the client will speak. You make sure that you communicate their, their message with as, as much clarity as possible. The other aspect of communication is the command of emotions. Now, there are many instances where we lawyers find ourselves in situations where uh, the emotions are running high, particularly if you're dealing with a case that involves people's uh, personal issues, uh, like matrimonial disputes. So the, it is important as a lawyer to ensure that you develop a soft skill that allows you to be insulated from extreme emotions. So if you find that uh, a client or even a colleague on the other side is, is getting upset and is beginning to shout, uh, it will not help if you start shouting. If um, you're, you're in a group of people and, and your client gets physical, you will certainly not be helping the, the situation if you also throw in your own punches. Maintain your uh, emotions um, and ensure that you have a good command of your emotions. And that is what people expect of you as a lawyer. Now in simplicity in speech and writing, I think I touched on this. Um, it is critical because you want to be understood and you want to ensure that whatever it is you say is not just understood, but clearly understood. And that way you have been able to communicate your message. Now, uh, the other aspect of your soft skills is high standards. And why I, we have narrowed in on high standards is because uh, generally society expects very high standards from, from members of the legal profession. And um, this goes without saying. So what are the elements uh, where high standards are expected? Uh, one is integrity and honesty. And I, I cannot overstate the element of integrity because we as lawyers are many uh, in many instances, the custodians of, of clients funds and very confidential information from clients. In fact, you know only too well that a lawyer cannot be uh, compelled to disclose uh, information that has been, that has come in, into his possession in the course of his um, conduct as a lawyer. But at a personal level, you must ensure that you maintain that confidentiality. So don't make your, your clients brief the conversation when you go out in the evening to, to have a drink with your colleagues or your friends or non-lawyers. Uh, make sure that whatever it is that um, your clients have told you, your clients will be confident that it will be held in the highest uh, level of confidence. And, and then honesty. It, even in simple things like uh, honoring your word, keeping time, uh, doing what you have said you would do. Um, and, and sometimes um, lawyers fall prey to even lying to clients um, when, they, when they have, they've been caught in default of having met certain deadlines. And it always catches up with you. And, some, uh, and many times you will find a client reasoning and saying, if, they, if my lawyer can lie to me about something trivial, I'm not sure I can trust them with something even more uh, substantial. So integrity and honesty are one of the hallmarks of high standards that are expected of a lawyer. Then the other element is dependability. Um, our clients expect us to be dependable. So we meet their deadlines. And when we don't meet their deadlines, by all means explain to them, clients are also human and they understand that uh, we get caught up. I have been in situations where I have um, been honest to clients and told them that um, I have not been able to meet a deadline and they understand. Um, sometimes we are tempted um, to run away from clients and in this uh, era of mobile phones to, to ignore their calls with the hope that uh, we can buy a bit more time. But 
it is always very helpful if your client knows that they can depend on you to respond to them when they reach out to you. If you're in a situation where you, you're not able to take a, a call, by all means, call back or even send a text message explaining your inability to take the call and promising to return the call uh, at an appropriate time. That is, uh, is, a, is a mark of a very high standard. And when uh, somebody with high standards is being referred to or being described, dependability is part of the description of a high standard. Of course, dressing and grooming, as John stated earlier, is, um, is part of the expectation. Uh, so, so that um, not only do, do people expect us as lawyers to be smartly dressed, uh, but the grooming has to go along with it. So that um, you, you don't, it, it would defeat the purpose if you wear a very nice suit, but um, your, your hair is shaggy, you've not been to the barbers if you're a man, or um, you've not brushed your teeth, and, and there are certain aspects of you that are completely inconsistent. So the dressing and grooming are all part of the high standards that people expect uh, you to have, and not just clients, but even those who you work with. Uh, that way, then uh, people will take you seriously as, um, as an individual and as a professional. Then there's the element of, of language. How do you speak? Uh, are you the sort of person who uses profanities? Um, you might think that perhaps um, it, it, it's, it's cool, it's, it's, it's hip to use certain swear words, uh, but it, it doesn't augur well for you as a professional to, to have certain types of language. And as much as possible, uh, you should have the high, highest standards possible so that you're not the sort of person who, when you speak, are mixing Swahili and English. People will begin to question your your intellectual ability if you're not able to communicate um, consistently in one particular language. So, so make it um, a habit uh, to, to stick to one language, whichever language it is you feel comfortable in. If you're going to speak Swahili, then speak Swahili and endeavor to do it uh, fluently. If you're going to communicate in English, likewise. Um, and then lastly, discipline. Discipline is a mark of high standards and um, everybody expects uh, that if you're a professional, then you must have a, a, a high level of discipline. And, it, and the elements of discipline are, are, are self-explanatory. Uh, just make sure that you keep your word, you keep, meet your deadlines, keep time, um, and, and all these reflect uh, high standards of, of, of the individual in, in, um, in, in the fact that they are disciplined. And if people know you to be a disciplined person, then they know they can rely on you. And um, since our work as lawyers is to consistently look for new work and, and to keep ourselves busy, you will find that uh, people will entrust work to you. Your colleagues will be more than happy to refer clients to you uh, because they know that um, you can be dependent on and you will do a good job. So in conclusion, what are we saying? One, that your success as a lawyer will be determined largely on how well you can manage people. And this really are soft skills. Soft skills go to the bottom of how well uh, you can manage people. And, and um, you may have been an A student in university and in your school and you have, may have a string of degrees, but your relationship with people will determine um, how far you go in your career and uh, how, how well you'll be able to, to grow your client base uh, as a lawyer, whether you're caught going or not. The importance of having a good name in a profession, whichever profession it is, cannot be um, um, overstated. And um, in a profession like ours, where we, we are often the custodian of custodians of very important um, aspects of um, our clients' um, possessions, like title documents, like uh, uh, even funds, it is important that we are trustworthy so that uh, people know that they can rely on us in, in, in all situations. And lastly, soft skills will enable us to achieve good relations and ultimately a very, very good reputation. And there is no doubt that many of the, the colleagues who are senior in the profession, who are regarded in very high esteem, uh, are, are people who, without a doubt, have uh, excellent soft skills. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, our presentation on soft skills comes to an end. 
I would like to thank you and even on behalf of uh, my colleague John for your attention and um, go back now to, to Helen, our moderator, to take us through the next aspect of uh, uh, this afternoon's presentation. Over to you, Helen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Egeria, Senior Counsel Chigiti. All I can say is, wow, this has been quite insightful. I hope that uh, we have all picked a thing or two. Senior Counsel Chigiti spoke about interpersonal skills, courtesy to colleagues, respect for the court, listening. And I am reminded of a quote that says, listening is not waiting for your turn to speak. Patience, confidence, creativity, and negotiation skills. Uh, Mr. Igeria has talked to us about availability, time management, attention to detail, reminding us that your name is your brand. You need to be dependable when you commit to something, see it through. And most importantly, remember grooming. So those vests that senior counsel was talking about, um, we do not want to see them in the virtual rooms. Right, and so ladies and gentlemen, um, having listened to those uh, presentations, we now open the floor to questions. Um, as we had stated before, please use the chat section for your questions. We will be going through the questions and uh, directing them to the speakers. So um, please feel free to type your question. We have one question here. Um, is emotional intelligence a soft skill? It has elements of self-management, relationship management, and self-awareness. Um, I don't know who to direct this question to. Shall I start with senior counsel? That's you, John. Yes, thanks a lot for that question. Indeed, it's a it's a really a valid entry uh, because uh, like we have seen those traits those characteristics are really about you some of us might not know some of us are very good at concealing self within our person so the best thing is for you to uh, interrogate and understand yourself and uh, there we go it's about uh, self-awareness your temperament your emotions only you will understand them best uh, what we might we might see out here are uh, a very rough person, a very ruthless person, a very uh, you know difficult person to deal with when it comes to interpersonal relationships. But ultimately, it's you to sit down there in your quiet uh, to um, take stock of your emotion, take stock of uh, you know who you're made of, what you're made of, your qualities, your characteristics. Then. Ultimately, that is not enough. You have to deliberately, intentionally uh, turn them around in such a way that they become useful um, by way of being the soft skills that are going to, for instance, uh, manifest courtesy, humility, confidence. And uh, at the end of the journey, you end up becoming a likable person, a person who is able to deliver uh, their client's case effectively. Thank you. Thank you, Senior Counsel. Um, Gloria, please read out the next question. Uh, sorry, uh, Helen. Yes. Allow me to say one or two things about uh, the, the, the issue of emotional intelligence. Just an answer to that question, whether emotional intelligence is a soft skill. Sure. And uh, my answer to that question would be that, yes, emotional intelligence is, is a soft skill. Now, let me explain what I understand by emotional intelligence. Now, emotional intelligence is, your, is the ability to, to determine um, what to say to people so that you don't um, offend them uh, or, or you, you don't, you, you, again, you endure yourself to people, um, not, not not in a way that puts them off. So uh, a situation where one would be lacking in emotional intelligence is uh, let's say you, you're meeting a client for the first time uh, and they walk into your, to, to your office uh, 
and, and, then, and then you tell them something like, uh, goodness, I didn't realize that uh, you look so old. Now, you know, generally people do not like to be told that they look old. So if you're blatantly telling someone that they look old or, or um, that you didn't realize that they were so fat and, and you know people who tend to be on the heavier side are sensitive generally about their weight, then you're lacking in emotional intelligence. Yeah. Or if you make, um, in this country, uh, Kenya, where we are fairly sensitive about people's uh, uh, tribal uh, lineages, uh, and if you make um, a joke about uh, somebody's tribe, knowing full well that you're making fun of them, uh, and, and you're, it, it's, it's an attempt at humor, that is lacking in emotional intelligence. So is intelligence, emotional intelligence a soft skill? Yes, it is. Because it, is, it enables you know how to deal with a relationship and to deal with people in a way that makes them feel comfortable and does not put them off from the interaction that they have with you. So that would be my answer to that question. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question says, um, how does one deal with colleagues who are good at sharp practice? For example, changing court dates, um, changing courts or dates without informing other parties. Uh, Mr. Igaria, you could start. I, uh, how do you deal with colleagues who are who are uh, good at sharp practice? I think one is to to have an honest and uh, confidential conversation with uh, such a client. Uh, the last thing you ever want to do with to someone is to embarrass them in public. So so uh, you might be so angry that you might uh, shoot off an, an angry letter and uh, broadcast to everyone what this person has done and maybe call them dishonest, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera, which, which may be, uh, if anything, bordering or defamatory. Uh, so the, how does one deal with such a person? Uh, as much as possible, try and deal with them with, us, with, with dignity and spare them the indignity of, uh, of, of publicizing exactly what it is they, are they have done, much as you do not like it unless it becomes absolutely necessary. Have a quiet conversation with them and ask them to, uh, to, to desist or to even undo whatever it is that they have done. If that fails, then of course you are, no, you are obliged to, to challenge them, um, maybe in the, in the presence of a third party. Uh, and, 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 um, and, and that really, in my opinion, would be the way to, to deal with such a person. Of course, if it borders on, on, on something that's, that's criminal, you can let them know that uh, if they don't desist, you will, you will take appropriate action which might involve, in, involve reporting them to an authority that would, would uh, penalize them accordingly. But I think at the, at the first instance, uh, you owe your colleagues an obligation to, to, to engage with them directly on a situation which you think they should address and, and should, they should be able to, to resolve. Because um, many of those sharp practices will not ultimately um, um, endear them to their clients, especially once their clients discover what they have done. And, and they always come out into the surface anyway. Um, and and um, you know, changing court dates will not earn you any, any, any benefit. You may have an application or hearing done ex parte, but once the issue of, um, of, of what has been done comes out, there will obviously be an application for, for um, a reversal of what has been done. So if there was an attendance or if there was a dismissal of uh, uh, an application for non-attendance because a date was changed um, in, and procedurally, that will come to light. So I think you are, you're under duty to talk to your colleague uh, confidentially and let them know that these sharp practices are many times um, futile exercises. They are shortcuts that will not end, um, end up well um, we who have been in practice for a number of years have seen the, the effects of some of those uh, practices and shortcuts. So I, I think that uh, in brief would be my answer to that question. But maybe John, you'd have something to add. 
I totally agree with you, Senia. Uh, only to add that uh, it would also not break a bone if you call them out. Just call them out confidently, but you have to be sure you have to have your facts right before calling them out. It helps. At times they feel embarrassed. At times they uh, reform or change, or sometimes they continue. However, should you find yourself repeatedly in that situ situation, always remember it has an expiry date. It's going to go someday, and it does. Always catch up with them. Because those are people who do not, a council who do not prepare well. Ultimately, like Senior has said, the outcome manifests even in the ruling that comes out of those court, sneaky court engagements. And then finally, uh, when you realize that something sneaky is happening the way it is happening in form of sharp practice, like today, 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 as we speak here, I have a file where I'm going through that. What you must do inform your client let your client know everything that is unfolding behind the scenes thank you thank you for that answer um the next question is directed to senior um it says how should one respectfully handle a court that appears to be bullying or treating counsel condescendingly? How well, it's, okay. it's not foreign, but that must not kill your morale, must not make you lose your case. Like we had earlier, soft skills are your best friend. Humility, be the fool, don't fight back, don't get into an end and an exchange, don't entangle with the court. When you're in that situation, always listen to what the officer of the court, the judicial officer is saying. It might be very harsh, might, it might be very heavy. However, if you're confident, and for instance, if you know you're on the right side, just respond politely not with a view to winning, but with a view to bringing closure to that conversation. Another way would be after the court session, find your mechanism and your way of accessing the chamber of that court, probably in the company of your colleague, not with your client, but with a view to going to, you know, just seek audience with the court and that does not mean that there you'll go and blow the court out of uh, its seat. You go in there to say, Your Honor, this is how I feel. May I suggest A, B, C, D? And again, remember humility even in that small room, it pays. Thirdly, speak and raise that concern with the Judicial Service Commission at the extreme. Go there only if you have you have to go there. Otherwise, uh, that's how I'll go around that issue. Thank you. Uh, as much as it is addressed to senior, Mr. Igerio, would you like to add anything? Uh, maybe just one thing. Uh, I, I, I think I'll do I'll do a bit of introspection and find out whether there is anything about my conduct that is. Uh, is, is, is causing the, the court to bully me or to be condescending. Uh, is there anything that I've done? Uh, am I speaking to, if, are we, if we're in a courtroom, I've, I'm sure you've seen instances where there are some lawyers who in a packed courtroom would be speaking to the, the magistrate or judge from right behind the room, or they are very casual in the manner in which they, they address the, 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 the court, simply because they, they feel that this person is younger than them, or there are some people who feel that they, there are some lawyers who feel that uh, by virtue of their position in the profession, their age, they're they are entitled to be a bit more casual to the court. 
So the question is, the issue is, I'd look at, I'd, I'd ask myself, is there anything that I have done to, to contribute or to cause or to contribute to the court's treatment towards me that I'm, I'm unhappy with? Am I in default of anything? Have I failed to meet any deadlines? Have I been asking for, for too many adjournments? Uh, and if there is anything in that regard, then I will correct it. Because uh, often many of these judicial officers do not know you or, or know you well enough. So they don't, they don't know who you are. Um, there, there must be something that you may have done that has caused them to, to treat you in the way that they're there. So I would look at my own conduct and find out what I can change. And if I'm confident that there's nothing I have done to trigger off uh, that kind of behavior, then um, I, I, I'll go back to, to doing the things that John has, uh, Senior Counsel John Chikiti has suggested um, that, uh, that, that you would do. So that's what I would add to that. Oh, thank you so much for that session. Um, I believe everyone has, who asked questions has been answered and kindly refer to the poll in the chats just to give feedback on the session we've had. Um, but I'd like to give uh, the speakers a chance to just say some closing remarks to, to the audience. We could start with you, Senior. Thank you very much to all of you. You are a power engine in yourself. Master your cylinders. Thank you. All right, uh, thank you very much. I, I have enjoyed the presentation. And what I'd like to say in conclusion, or as a parting shot, uh, is that the, 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 the whole conversation about uh, soft skills and managing people uh, can only be successful if people feel uh, confident and safe in your presence. So whatever uh, or however you, you perceive it to be uh, or in order to achieve that, always endeavor to ensure that the people who come into your presence uh, feel confident and feel safe, whether it's your colleagues, whether it's your workers, whether uh, they are, um, they're under you or they're above you, or whether it's your clients. Uh, if, if you create a safe environment around you, then by all means, you'll have gone um, a long way to, towards um, um, ensuring that your soft skills are, are, are top notch. Uh, I always remember a situation um, way back when I was uh, as, as, as a very young pre-university student in the company I worked, uh, a driver was employed and his first, his first interaction with, with the company was with the, the senior HR manager who was very good at managing people. And, um, and, and this man was a driver and he, he found himself so comfortable that he sat back, he ordered tea and um, he took about three spoons of sugar, uh, sipped his tea noisily. When he eventually got into the company and he realized who he was dealing with, he was shocked that he had been uh, so, um, so casual in, in the office of someone who was so senior. But the point is that if you want uh, people to, to, if you want to make people malleable to what it is that you, you want to be, and, and, and that really is our brief as lawyers. Uh, we, we, we are on a journey to persuade people to accept our point of view, whether you're in court or, or otherwise because you've been entrusted with a brief by a client and you want to go it, you want it to go in accordance with your client's instructions. So the first step is really to ensure that um, people are comfortable and, and feel safe and they will not feel bullied because at the, on the face of it, um, as a lawyer, people tend to feel that they're very intimidated. Uh, you know, they, they often uh, quoted phrase, I, I will, you will be hearing from my lawyer it's something that people take very, very seriously. So endeavor to make people feel safe and that way 
you will be able to achieve as much as possible without, because uh, when people are intimidated, they, they become defensive, then uh, you'll find that you'll not make much progress in, in whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, seniors. Thank you very much for the presentations you have made this afternoon. Um, I'd like to remind the participants that at the Nairobi branch, we do have the bar bench committees and the liaison committees, uh, which can also act as an avenue for you to address uh, issues that you may have between advocates and the bar, sorry, the bench. Um, the bar bench committees are still open. You can join any committee that you are interested in. We do have bar bench committees for various courts throughout Nairobi and Kiambu counties and the various divisions of the High Court, the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. Um, we also do have liaison committees for those who are not uh, litigators for the lands office and the company's office, company's registry. So you can join any of those committees and you'd be able to articulate your issues in the event that you do have some. Uh, please feel free to also look at our website, our social media handles for more information about activities by the branch. And we are delighted to invite you to participate. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind you that the Nairobi Legal Awards nomination process has begun. Please uh, fill in the forms, nominate yourself or nominate someone else who you think deserves these awards. So, um, as I said, we had the pleasure and privilege of listening to two very senior members of the bar. And I'd like to thank them for their time this afternoon and for sharing with us the little gems of wisdom that they have. Um, indeed, if you were to listen to um, the, the presentations made and if we were to implement and exercise these interpersonal skills that we have been to told about, I am sure that it would uh, make us better individuals, better advocates generally, and uh, practice would be a lot more delightful. And so ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to listen carefully, think about it, exercise it. I would like to thank our speakers this afternoon. Thank you very, very much to Mr. Arthur Igeria and Senior Counsel John Chigiti for taking the time to actually speak to us juniors about these issues that some of us may not be aware of and some of us may take for granted. We know them, but uh, well, we just, maybe we overlook them and don't think they're as important as knowing the law. So thank you very, very much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very cold afternoon and uh, because there are no other questions, I would like us to end the session here so that we can uh, look for some warmth somewhere. For those who are not in Nairobi, thank your lucky stars. I think in Nairobi, we're about to see some snow. So with that, on behalf of the branch, I wish you a pleasant evening. Goodbye. Thank you.